Welcome to Board Game Hangover. I'm Yanis and this is... Hi, Yanis as well. So we're gonna draft two player games and uh, at the end of the day we'll have two lists of six fantastic two player games and uh, well one of those lists will be better than the other one yeah. so you so can there choose will be a winner. My list and then there'll be the other list. So not an exclusive two player no, game not an but exclusive good with two, two players. Exactly. Okay. exactly. I think you Yanis have the first pick and the first okay. category and the first category is shorter than 30 minutes. How this works is I'm gonna pick a game and you can't pick it right? Yeah so, exactly. Okay. I'll pick Dominion. Actually, I think one of the first, if not the first, deck building game. Basically, you start out with a small deck of cards, and during the game, you get more cards that you put into your deck. So your deck gets bigger and bigger, and they have more abilities to do, and things like that. And the first thing that comes to mind when you say less than 30 minutes, I'm thinking really quick, where I don't have to wait a long time to get my turn again. That thing is Dominion, because if you know how to play, you actually can do your turn less than a minute. But that is also a minus with that game if you're playing with someone for the first time and that's the way you play, they're just not gonna play with you anymore. They're gonna go like, what just? What did you just do? What happened? I don't like this game. Go to game that we and my wife play all the time is Doppelt So Clever, or I think in English it's Double So Clever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a roll and write game uh, and I'm cheating a bit because there's actually going to be a category <laughs> like that afterwards as well. Okay. You just roll some dices, choose what you want and then leave one for the other person to choose. So it's super quick, it's super easy and I love it. Have you played the first one? Gunshot Yes, Clever? second one is better. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I haven't better. played the second one and now you got me interested. Yeah. The second one is like harder to figure out. So okay. uh, it's a bit more complex. So maybe if you haven't ever played these games, I would suggest you trying out the first one. Because mm -hmm. I think after you play this second one, you don't want to play the first one because it's huh. too kind of well, easy. That's, that's a good sell. There's not a lot of games that you uh, play, like not all the time, but you know, come back to again and again. And Double So Clever is one of those games okay, for sure. Cool. Category number two is a bit different. It's a legacy game. Legacy game. Right. Wow. So I guess uh, this needs a bit more explanation, right? So Yanis, what is a legacy so game? So a legacy game is a game where you make permanent changes as you play from game to game. For example, you have to draw something on the board or you have to rip up a card or you have to put a sticker down on a card or on a board. So basically during these games, you make your own legacy of that game. In the end, you're going to have your unique game that nobody else has uh, in the world or has played that way. And I guess you go first. If he says pandemic, it's boring. <laughs> go ahead, continue. Yeah, yeah. Now I'll say Gloomhaven. Oh, for sure. And it's great with two players. Yeah. I actually forgot that Gloomhaven counts as a legacy game yeah, it is. because yeah. I actually got it because of that reason. Yeah. And I played it with two players with my wife, yeah. and I didn't like it at you all like because it. Wow. I felt there's just too much bookkeeping for my mm. tastes. I have to all move right. this. I have to. How much life did that have? And things like that. But I recently played it again and they had the app. It makes all the changes because it just tracks the life of all the monsters, all the effects, who yeah. goes first, yeah. just speeds up the game immensely. And actually we have an idea, uh, let us know if you would like it, uh, to have a playthrough of for uh, the Jaws of Lion. Yeah. Because it's a fun game and we could try it out. Yeah. Well, I thought you were going to pick Pandemic. So uh, now I have to pick Pandemic, uh, <laughs> but no, I'm actually going to pick Clank Legacy. Yeah, yeah. I knew you were okay. going to go there. Yeah. I mean, it's really amazing. I actually haven't finished it yet. I'm seven games in out of ten, I think. Why I like it is, is it's a really nice deck building game. Because I like deck building games, you can see a theme with me here. Usually in Legacy games, nothing really changes while you play through it. But then after the game, you open some new stuff, put some stickers on, and there's different rules for the next game. But in Clank Legacy, during the game, you will read chapters, you will tear up cards, you will put stickers on. So much happens during the game, during that one play session, that is just crazy, which I really like. You mentioned Pandemic, so we have to talk about Pandemic. Yeah, I guess we have to. For a really long time, it was the number one game, at board yeah. game top, and actually was super highly reviewed everywhere. Yeah, season one. It is a good game. The problem w that I had with that game was that like something small happened, but overall you're playing the same game over and over and over again, but it's a good game. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I did feel that the legacy aspect uh, adds enough for me to want to come back. And that was like one of the first legacy games I played. 
but uh, I never finished it. So, you know, uh, I never finished Legacy Games. So. What is interesting, a lot of people that played it and talked to me about it, they said, it's amazing, it's so great. But yeah. then when they finished it, they said, it's just okay. And yeah. I thought, what yeah. happens at the end? No spoilers, I don't know, but I haven't finished mine yet. But somehow, once they finish it, they feel like it was just okay. So, Yanis, why should you subscribe to Board Game Hangover? Because we do tops of games. You can find out about new games. You can find out new tricks for the old games. And most importantly, to support our channel. Because one small click for you is a giant leap for Board Game Hangover. Exactly. So, just click that button and help us out, please. And thank you. The next category is Euro Game. Yanis, what is a Euro Game? A Euro game is basically an economic game that has probably zero theme or close to no theme, but some might disagree, where you build something, gather resources, exchange them for other things that let you get more resources and so on and so forth. So basically an economic game yep. is a Euro game. Like most common Euro game in the world, I guess, is Settlers of Catan or just Catan, they call it now. I'm just going to pick any game that comes first to my mind because it's probably the best one. So I'm going to go with Glenn Moore. Two. So you probably never heard of that game, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's good. So Glenmore is a really old game and it was a small box Euro game where you lie down tiles just like in Carcassonne but uh, it's more resource based and, and, and things like that and it happens in Scotland, there's no team. But other than that, it was very easy flowing and it was really nice with two players because there's not a lot of interaction anyway. So it doesn't matter if it's three, four or five, it just takes longer. Last year, Glenmore 2 came out. It's actually called Glenmore 2 Chronicles, I think. And, um, and it's just amazing. I love it and uh, everyone should give it a go. You actually mentioned my game already. Oh. So it's uh, Terraforming oh. Mars. We go back to Terraforming Mars time and time again. The only issue is it takes a long time to finish it. So it, it's not that often, but for what it is, we play it a lot of times uh, and it's amazing. You mentioned that Euro games are kind of the same. The Terraforming Mars seems different from all of them. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's Definitely. complicated. If you have never played Euro games or, or if you haven't played like real gamer games, then uh, Terraforming Mars is too difficult probably. When I first played it, everyone says it's so complex, but so amazing. Yeah. And I read the rules and the rules are actually very easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah but the complexity comes from the choices you have to make. You have like a hand of cards and you can play only one or two. And it's always which one, because yeah. they're all so awesome. So it is a quite long game. It's not something you can quickly set up and just let's quickly play Terraforming Mars. No. I think I've played it for like four hours with like three or four people. Even if you lose, it's still, you feel good about it because you see your system work and it's good and maybe you're missing two points, but it doesn't matter because you have like an awesome- Yeah, like a sense belt. of accomplishment. I love it for two players. Do you play with draft? Yeah, draft okay. is the best. Like, That's everything it says. The, I've played it yeah. two times, yeah. never with the draft. Yeah. We just no, deal out uh, the cards and what no, you get is you get. No, and everyone's no, like no, always- No, <gasps> you don't, no, no, no. You don't you, ever play with Draft. Yeah, you don't play Terraforming Mars without draft. All the Terraforming Mars snobs say that, that yeah, you should definitely I'm one play of them, with. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Roll and write games. But also draw and write yeah, works, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah. so basically roll and write is Yahtzee, you know, just to put it basically. You usually roll some dice and you have to pick something or just use what you rolled and write it down on a page and uh, you try to score most points in different ways that the game allows you through the dice. And then there's a new trend as well where you replace the dice with the cards. You like flip a couple of cards open and then that's your options. You can pick one from those and uh, then you have to write it in in your page. But if you pick the, the doppel so clever you already, you yeah, can't, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, no. Good luck. The game is called Cartographer. Oh, yeah, that's a really uh, good one. You draw cards and then you can draw different shapes on your uh, yeah. sheet. And then whoever draws better Forms. Yeah, there's different like scoring options uh, for each game. You, yeah, available. The next pick is yours. Uh, what is it? Okay, so for my roll and write, it's actually going to be draw and write. It's going to be welcome to. Welcome to, that's a good one. It was one of the first draw and write games that I played. And what I really like about it is that it kind of gives you a thematic feel that you're actually building your suburb and, and giving numbers to each of the houses and building pools and fences. So it feels a bit thematic as thematic that kind of game can be. 
that's enough for roll and write let's go on and the next category is lcg or just card collecting games i think i'm gonna pick lord no of no, no, no 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 i'm messing but uh i'm so tempted to so this is i think my favorite genre uh, of board games and this feeling of collecting cards and building your own deck and trying it out and then improving it is really exciting. And the only thing that has replicated it recently, and recently, I mean, it's almost been two years, I think, since it's out, is Keyforge. Yeah. So my pick for that is going to be Keyforge. Oh. And why I like Keyforge is because it saves my time. I mean, in, in these days, in this day and age, everyone's, you know, out of time constantly. What Keyforge does is it gives you already a pre-built deck and yes i know you're gonna say everything does every game does that but no 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 no. you can't modify it it's just your unique deck that nobody else in the world has in that combination also it generates unique card backs and name of the deck but that's a whole different thing and uh so you have this deck and it might be good and it might be bad but you can't change it that's the one you play so you basically just buy a deck and you're ready to go you don't have to build anything you don't have to collect anything unless you want to get better decks and then you end up collecting a lot of bad decks that i have sadly but anyway it does save your time uh to get to play not your money but your time definitely yeah so yeah you mentioned lord of the rings because i'm picking yeah. lord of the rings well i'm a big sucker for lord of the rings in general and the most fun thing is building your deck and thinking that all right this is the best deck ever and then like winning a scenario with it and like destroying it and feeling like, okay, I won the game, uh, this is gonna be easy. The next scenario comes and then um, it destroys you. Your deck <laughs> sucks uh, and you need to do it again. Um, and just this constant uh, competition with the game. Um, yeah. It's super fun and it's great for two players. I love it for two players. Do you own too much of it already? Yes and no. <laughs> I want to buy more for sure. Well, yeah, I, uh, I yeah. bet. Yeah. No, I have like huge pile of dwarf decks, but I'm thinking, all right, I don't want to build like a, um, I don't know, elf deck. Okay. So I need a few more cards. Okay. All right. Just, just a few so, more. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I love rings. LCG is amazing. And my wife, when we got it, we used to play it like constantly for like half a year, nonstop. And then we took a break and we never came back to, to that game. Yeah. So maybe we just uh, overdid it but still 10 out of 10 for me as well. So it's a amazing game. The last category here is a bit different. It's called wild card. Okay. So the only rule you have is that it has to be um, played with two players. The more out of the box you go, the better. I want to go with more an like uh, active game. All right? Okay. So I'm going to go with Clask. Uh, it's, it's similar to like table hockey, that type of game, but it's different. It's super quick. It's fun. Uh, it gives you a lot of emotions. Like the one minus is you're not gonna probably play it often because how often you're gonna get like the other person that's like invested in the game yeah. as much as you are. For example, if you have kids, uh, uh, I like, do. Yeah, I do. Okay. yeah. Then uh, I think it's a great game to have. Yeah, for my, them my too. boys like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. They, they play it between themselves. Obviously, there's not much of a challenge because I'm so much better than they are. But who knows? With time. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After wait a bit. That's my wild card. What's yours? Huh. Okay, so I might, uh, you know, originality is great, but sometimes just, you know, borrowing some ideas is uh, just quicker. So I'm going to piggyback out of your idea, and I'm going to, first of all, it's gonna, I'm going to pick a category, and I'm going to pick right. real-time games, which right. Clask would qualify, yeah. but you already took Clask, so I'm going to take something right. else. Right. So uh, one of the recent ones I played and I really liked is uh, Project Elite. You play simultaneously, and usually there's a time limit on to what you do. In Project Elite, you it's basically Starship Troopers, the game, if you've seen the yeah, movie yeah. Starship Troopers. What happens is you each get a guy and you're rolling the dice to you know use actions to move them, to shoot and everything, like you would normally in a dungeon crawler or, or miniatures game. But the thing is, it happens in real time. So you have like two minutes to do a round and once the round is over, you see what happens uh, because then the aliens move. And I really love, it gives this video game feel to a board game where everything happens at the same time. Usually when people ask me what are the best games to get like kids into that play a lot of like video games into board games, real time games, because you feel like you're playing a video game. Yeah. So my wild card is real time games, but specifically Project Elite. Great game. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, those were our characters. Thanks for watching. Yeah. And uh, this this is like super fun for us for sure. Yeah, Just definitely. Just discussing games, and um, this is um, 
how I see it, this is kind of a better way to do like a top games because you have like now top 12 games or yeah. top two, in, top in sixes. two player category. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just fun. Um, better way to do it, I think. Uh, if you enjoy it as well, let us know. Uh, let us know in the yeah. comments. Maybe we kind of missed something. Maybe there's a better game uh, no. than we mentioned. Probably not. No, no. Uh, let us know whose list is better. Uh, say something good about Giannis's list as well because, you know, he's, uh, he's a sensitive guy. He doesn't want to lose, but we all know sure, how please. it went I, out. I can take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But yeah, um, let us know if there's some other category category you want us to do the list in yeah that's also and important. Uh, we'll definitely do it all right probably See you next time. maybe right yeah bye yeah. See ya.